What I'd like to say to you today is deceptively simple. It's what our mothers taught us. It's what we learnt in kindergarten. And it's this. When something is difficult to do, it's best that we do it together. There's no need to struggle on our own. The, uh, the Western notion of independence, of sort of working in isolation, is not particularly useful in, in our context. If we are going to tackle these massive issues in South African education, we need the synergy that comes from working together. We need to share what works, and we need to build on one another's strengths. Many of you will know this quote. Um, I first came across it in Dr. Rampele's Dinner King scenarios. Haven't we tried to go fast in South African education? Haven't we tried the quick fixes? And it hasn't been remarkably successful. Our journey is a longer one. And if we're going to get there, we need to travel it together. So let me share my story. Steve mentioned uh, I'm the principal of Claremont High School. We are barely more than a year old. We're the newest math science focus school in Cape Town. And uh, our vision really is to create opportunities for pupils from disadvantaged backgrounds. But the stroke of genius that the education department had, uh, Ms. Penny Vingerfold, who I think might be here today, was to ask Westerford High School to partner with us when we were started. To have an established, well-resourced school help and support us as a new school with more limited resources. So the first level of that partnership is that we've been able to benefit from the structures and systems in that established school. Whether it was enrollment or finances or academic structures, what was already tried and tested and operating at a high level could be implemented in our school from the outset. And that's meant we haven't had to go back and fix or undo sort of systems that are, are broken and, and not working well at all. Now, we're not a clone of Westerford. We, uh, we're in our own unique context. So we also have to stand strongly and chart our own course where necessary. But by far the most significant aspect of the partnership for me is the connection between people in the two institutions. And that happens on many levels. Quite a few senior pupils at Westerford volunteer to come across and help us in our extramural program. Now, did you hear that word? These are teenagers who volunteer in their own time, make their own way across to our school, and come and do things like tutor a group of junior pupils, or instruct in martial arts, or run an art or drama club. And in, in our new school, it's been invaluable to have these young role models uh, mentoring and uh, supporting and engaging with our pupils. That's a winning recipe, young people mentoring other young people. We've been working hard to establish uh, this new ethos in, in our school, but these young people who've come across to help, they've embodied it. And their example is far more powerful than anything us adults in the school can say. Take the example of, of a matric girl. Um, she came across and, and she was tutoring six grade eight girls uh, in maths. And the matric girl was a prefect, had a very busy, hectic schedule herself. But faithfully, every week, there she was working with these girls. And they loved it. They would eagerly await her arrival each week. They'd say things like, oh, she's amazing, we want to be like her. And the matric girl loved it too. The sort of warmth and engagement that she got from those relationships was very significant. So much so that when she was studying for finals, the end of her matric year, even then, she made a point of coming every week for those lessons because those relationships and connections uh, meant so much to her. And then the connections happen at the level of teachers. All my teachers collaborate with, the, with their peers at Westerford. They design work schemes together. They share assessments and teaching strategies. 
which means that teachers at the new school are not left on their own. They form part of well-functioning subject departments. And we've been able to set the right academic standards at the new school from the start. You know, high-functioning schools have many excellent teachers, but some of them are a little bored or a little stuck in their roles. And a bold partnership like, like ours, it, it helps them or, or gives them the space to be pioneering again and energizes them. Let me tell you about one such teacher. Uh, he's been teaching for 40 years in, uh, in many high-functioning environments. This is his last year of teaching before he retires. And when we opened, he volunteered to, um, to come and teach one lesson a day with us. And he told me the other day how anxious he was when he was about to start. This is a teacher with 40 years experience, but it was a new context and would he cope and would the pupils be able to sort of, would he be able to connect with them? Well, not a day goes by when he doesn't tell me how this has been the best year of teaching in his entire 40 years and how he's sort of constantly astounded by the warmth and engagement that he gets with the pupils. And it's been significant for me personally, I must tell you. Um, leading a school is a complex role, and at times I find it quite daunting. So for me, it's been so enabling to have the support and uh, advice of an experienced principal, the mentorship, when some new issue comes across my desk and I'm sort of scratching my head and, and stymied, I can, I can get him on the end of, of the phone and get his advice and experience. And when he says something like, Murray, I'm, I'm happy to take on this battle for you if you'd like me to. Whoa, what a sense of relief. <laughs> can hand that one over and releases me to, to get on with other things. And lastly, I just want to say how significant this partnership is in our South African context because it's bridging the economic divide. It's the haves and the have-nots working together and collaborating. And that's crucial and so healing for everyone involved. There are three of my grade 11 boys who are very clever. They're very smart guys. So I wanted to expose them to advanced maths I was able to enroll them at a, a neighboring school to take it as an eighth subject. And I remember clearly the first time I took them across to that school for their first lesson. We drove onto the campus of this beautiful school uh, with its rolling playing fields and the luxury cars parked in the car park. And I just felt these boys shrink next to me. I knew they could hold their own academically, but this privileged environment was intimidating them. Well, they faced their fears and they went into that first lesson. And now they're six months into the program and they are flourishing. And they're starting to believe that they don't have to stand back for anyone. Or the example of a grade nine girl that I was chatting to the other day. And I, I was asking her how her first year at Claremont High had been. And you know what she said to me? She said, sir, I used to think that because I come from a disadvantaged background, I don't deserve a successful life. But fortunately, she paused and she said, but I'm starting to realize that I was wrong and that I've got just as much right as anyone else. And if I work hard enough, I'll get there. So that's our story of how enabling school partnerships can be. But I'm profoundly aware that, that one size doesn't fit all, that it's not a solution that can just be rolled out everywhere. Different contexts have very different challenges. But I remain convinced that our mothers were right. If something is difficult to do, it's best for us to do it together. Thank you.